Hello and welcome to another edition of Scale JDM Reviews. And on the bench today you can see that we have the Junction Produce JZS147 Aristo and is full of all the goodies that one of the original VIP tuners Junction Produce themselves um, could kit out a car with. Now I know that they released this particular kit before and it had the smaller 18 inch wheels in it. Now this kit as you can see on the front of the box emblazoned in bright gold is 19 inch which means this has the slightly larger uh, Junction Produce Skara wheels which are made by Oz and if we take a look around the box we can see that this box is a little bit tatty this is a Yahoo's auction win uh, from a little while ago um, it does come with the, uh, the the standard VIP knots that you would normally get in a, in a VIP star car and of course there's 19 inch wheels and that beautiful body kit Okay, so for the uninitiated, what you see here is a VIP style car. You can see it's got a body kit or ground effects, whatever you want to call it. It's lowered, it's got some really nice big alloys on it, and it's kitted out in a really nice, clean, subtle way. Uh, those are the things that are kind of the essence of uh, VIP. I mean, modern VIP, you know, you get some absolutely crazy cars out there. They've got mad camber, massive wheels, extremely deep dish, crazy paint coats. Um, and very 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 low to the ground um, I mean VIP you know when it started out was basically what you see on this box it has evolved over the years um, but obviously there are a lot of cars out there that are still true to its roots uh, and this one is one of them uh, Junction Produce were one of the pioneers of the VIP style they made a lot of cars and a lot of different body kits and their kits always always look fantastic there are other manufacturers of kits for these big body cars you've got Vlean, you've got k-brake of course i've done a review on their kits before uh rojam there's 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 many others uh, out there and they all make the cars look fantastic so but in this video of course we're looking at the junction produce uh, aristo here uh, so let's have a look and see what's inside the box as you can see the kit is completely unstarted it's still in all its bags so uh, in my usual fashion, give me a few seconds and we will take care of that. Right, let's get rid of this because we don't need that. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to look at the decals first. And here we go. As you can see on the screen, we have some silver pinstriping at the bottom. Junction Produce badges uh, on the left, number four and five. Uh, they would be for the side of the car. I think one's silver and one is gold. I think the gold's on the left here. These would be, I guess you could put them anywhere you want, but normally it'd be uh, around the indicator maybe. Uh, side indicator sorry on the fender and um, we've got some junction produce window stickers here some smaller ones there um, we've got some other junction produce badges there this black one here is for the it seems to have a bit of a tear in that one uh, this black part here is for the back lights so you don't have to paint them because that is a very very thin line it's not the sort of thing you want to be painting uh, obviously a couple of junction produce number plates um, some Japanese number plates uh, with the 300 uh, designating it as, is a car over two litres and you have the speed gauge, uh, speedo however on this kit we also have a second set of decals now this is especially for the very sexy junction produce scar wheels now these are the center caps um, you should have them on screen now as a scan where you can see them in a little bit more detail um, but those will go right in the center of the wheels okay first up we are going to look at this window sprue now as you can see it's a bit of a funny car and that's because there are two in this kit we have a tinted one so you don't have to do the tinting yourself and it does look pretty awesome i must admit and the whole sprue is tinted that even includes um the side lights the, the fog lights the headlights the indicators the rear light panel everything um of course when you look at it on the the normal sprue which is the one you get with the normal aoshima uh, 147 kit uh, you can see everything in a little bit more detail of course when you build the kit you can mix and match it. you can have the tinted windows but every all the lights clear and everything if that's how you want to build it um, but to us I really applaud Aoshima for this because I really like the fact that we have the choice and I'm not so good at tinting windows so having some already pre-molded in a tinted color is uh, is a neat little step for me and I do appreciate it so just to go into a little bit more detail on the sprue we're going to look at the colored one so you've got the the main window um front rear sides and you can still see the slightly matted out section there where you'd have to paint the the black of the the window edges and um, you have the the front lights here 
and the rear light cluster. We also have the indicators and the side lights, or I guess the fog lights, and we have the side repeaters just here. Of course, these are duplicated perfectly on the dark sprue as well. So I'm going to just come under this screw right here. Okay, next, let me see, we have some sandpaper. Now, I've explained this in other videos, but for those who haven't seen them, um, this bit of sandpaper here is a quite a handy piece of tool. It's for the body. And what you do is you sandpaper the insides of the wheel arches here. As you can see, the plastic there is around a millimetre thick. And when you want to do a low car, especially uh, with a standard Aerosmith kit, um, the, the, tire, the wheels, once they go into those arches, are going to look like they're really inset and they're not going to look very well at all. So what you do is you sand the insides down, get them nice and paper thin. And so when the wheel is up against it, it looks really clean. It looks really nice and flush. And that is the look you want to go for on a lowered car. Here we go. So again, yeah, just... next screw is the chassis, as you can see. Um, we have some mouldy wishbones at the top there. Now this is a uh, generic 147 chassis. Um, this is showing the engine bay as a V8 configuration, which this car did have. Um, you can tell it's a slightly older mouldering. Just the, the condition of it is not shiny or anything. It's um, it's quite matted and, and, and scraped in places. However, it, uh, it is holding up well. Uh, and we'll see once it's painted up, it will look pretty good, of course, but you know, People don't really see the underneath of these cars very much anyway, so you could be forgiven to, to leave it completely unpainted uh, and keep it black as it is, uh, especially if you're just building a curbside model uh, with no engine detail, because obviously you can just get that cut out and put your own V8 in if you wanted to. Next up, we have this lovely brake setup, and we have these really, really nice screwed and slotted brake discs for the front and rear. We have um, the rear suspension here with an airbag setup and the front steering sections and I'm guessing the airbags for that are going to be somewhere else in the kit. Uh, we have the, the longer spindles here as and when needed and also from here looking at these we have the rear fog lights there and the rear indicators there. I guess they are optional if you want to put them in. Um, I've not yet checked the instructions but uh, I'm guessing those can be put in if you want them to be. Okay next up we have the chassis sprue. Uh, and you can see we have the another set of suspension airbag <laughs> suspensions. Um, I'm not too sure without looking at the instructions which one we're going to put on the car. I'm guessing this is for normal ride height. The other ones on the other kit, the on the other sprue, sorry, were for the lowered ride height, which is what we're going to be using for this car. Just like we won't be using these brake discs because they look very boring and normal. Uh, we have some more um, spindles there for when you put the wheels on. I, again, I think we're using the ones on the other sprue that we showed a minute ago. Of the twin exhaust setup and the front sump guard and front subframe, the spare tire well, rear diff uh, with rear drive shafts, uh, the front steering arms, and we've got the I'm guessing that's for the rear suspension just there. Um, I've never built a 147 before from Aeroshima, so I'm quite impressed with the way the suspension set up. Should look pretty good when done. Next up, we have the first part of the interior so we have the obviously that's normal the the interior floor and the rear seats were molded into one piece uh, it does look like they have a, a leather very smooth leather interior on these nicely did our parcel shelf there and uh, we have the the front and rear door panels um those um done in a different color as in say if you did the whole of it black and the insides they're kind of a sandy beige and a few other bits it would look absolutely gorgeous and uh, we've got the rear of the seats there as well for the front seats uh, with the kind of pocket there for the rear passengers to store magazines and things in. Next we have the front seats which look ultra comfortable to be honest they do look really really nice. Um, I have to hunt a set of those out for my crown. Um, we've got another front sub guard and uh, front subframe there but the other one is for the lower suspension we won't be needing this one. Uh, we have the windscreen wipers and the wing mirrors so the number plate holders, the rear view mirror, automatic gear shift knob, the steering console and the steering wheel itself. And last but not least, we have the instrument panel and the dashboard. Again, once the details put in there, um, it can actually bring it to life quite nicely. Right, next we're closing into the tasty bits. So I'm going to pull out this sprue here. Now this is the Junction Produce uh, body kit. 
So down here we have the front lower bumper. It's very smooth, very clean looking, which is uh, part of Junction Produce's um, way of doing things. You also have upside down the rear bumper, the rear lower part of the bumper, and the obviously the outlets for the twin exhaust. We have a very subtle rear wing, which would go over the back of the tailgate. And we also have the side skirts. Now that's the bottom, of course, because the wheel arch should go that way. And we have some headlight eyelids as well, which will which are a nice touch. Um, a couple of spacers there, I'm not totally sure what they're for. Uh, and we also have a, a Junction Produce, um, I think they call it a sauna knot, I think. I will research that, but obviously once that's painted and put in the window, it won't look so flat and lifeless. Right, next up, tyres. Let's have a look at these. Just look at these. I haven't opened these yet because they've got some small bits in and I would probably lose them. So let's get those bad boys out of there, just like that. So here we are. These are lovely and thin. They look like uh, Pirelli's or something. However, a lovely tread pattern. Uh, and once they're on the wheel, they will look absolutely fantastic. Of course, very, very low profile. Very skinny, very skinny tyres. Uh, we also get, obviously, a set of four poly caps as per normal with every kit so leading on to the next sprue before we get to the good bit uh, we have the uh, standard Toyota Aristo grill there we have the exhaust tips and the wing mirror infills and the actual glass of the wing mirrors themselves so next let's get move that out of the way we have a slightly slightly different version of the grill this is the junction produce version and we have the uh, much much nicer exhaust tips as you can tell um, it's up to you obviously if you want to put the standard Toyota one on or if you want to use the JP item and JP tips obviously how you build the kit is exactly up to you um, I personally will be using these because they are very tasty so now moving on to these gorgeous junction produce scar wheels now these are the 19 inch versions um, and as you can see, they are they've been molded and painted in a silver color, uh, which is nice because the actual lips themselves are molded and, and plated in chrome. So when you put them across like that and fit them together, just like that, we have a really really nice set of wheels there. A stunning set. Um, the Scar wheels are one of my favourite wheels of all time, as I mentioned in a previous video where I did actually review the 18 inch versions. And we have those right here now with some tyres just to compare the size. As you can see, the spokes are slightly longer on the 19 inch version. We just move the tyre out of those, and there we go. Side by side comparison. Of the two wheels. Now to everyone's favourite bit, the body. Here we are, really nicely moulded in black. Um, this is a classic Aristo shape. I really, really do love the shape of this car. Uh, this was the shape that they started to use more European lines with their car, very curved and uh, very executive looking. Obviously, the older Soros were very angular and uh, very straight lines all over them. This is a lot more smooth, a lot, lot more relaxed looking. Um, there will need to be a lot of work done to this, obviously, to get it prepared properly. As you can see, there are some mold lines on the back, coming down the bumpers, down the lights. Oops, and he drops it. And across the front, just there as well. But that, apart from that, it doesn't actually seem too bad. It wouldn't be too difficult to get rid of those. And, and even if you made this kit with the JP suspension and the JP wheels, and didn't even put the body kit on it, it would still make a really, really nice kit. Okay, so as you look at this part of the video, we're gonna go into the instructions, to show you how easy it is to make the kit or how difficult in some cases they can be. First page, you have the layout of the car, where you place the decals, including the pinstripes, a uh, general look of the car, those uh, wheels and tires don't match up to the warning of the car. So this is the smaller version, so obviously the instructions haven't changed since they did the reissue of the new wheels. Um, next page, we have got the creation of the front steering with the 
with the Brembo brakes, the grooves and slotted discs, the fitting with the airbags into the front with the with the sample. It is showing the normal subframe on that car, and I'm pretty sure we would need to use the other one uh, that came with the kit. However, it will show us later on in the instructions if that's showing up. Obviously, you've got the rears as well, the lower part here. Again, when you fit those, they will be going on with, with airbags. Uh, you've got the rear tire well there, the exhaust and the, the bigger J exhaust tips. Um, obviously, you've got the rear diff and everything. And then it tells you about the wheels, putting them together with the, because they were two-piece with a separate lip. Uh, the poly cap, the wheel, the tire, direction of tread and where they go, which is kind of self-explanatory. Next, we have the interior. Obviously, this can be painted up as uh, any way you want, depending on what you do with the color of the car. Um, if it's going to stay black like this, you could either paint it bright white, there's like a really nice contrasty white leather interior, or a black one, or anything you say feel is uh, what you're looking for. Uh, of course, you've got the color coordinations it's showing here, as I mentioned, with the, with the different parts being a different color like a contrast. And also, we need to put the decal on the, the dashboard there. Uh, again, it's showing you here the parts that need to be painted and uh, and where to put it on. It's also showing here, as you can see, four circles are where you are meant to use that sandpaper. And it is telling you there to sand it down. Now, with that little piece of sandpaper, which is a really nice addition from Aoshima, it will it is possible. It will take you an absolute age. I personally use a Dremel very carefully and that gets through the plastic in a few seconds. Okay, next page, we've got the front of the car, the headlights, the ring mirrors and the grille. Of course, it's using the JP grille there. Um, the rear lights, which can be painted up, and then the decal placed on the back, because that's how all the uh, the Aristos and the GS300s uh, from Lexus were, uh, were made with that black masking over the back there. Then it's just a simple case of putting the interior into the chassis and then a body on top, and then comes the fun part of actually adding the body shell, including those lovely headlight eyebrows. Now, personally, me, when I build a kit, I put the body shell and the body kit together, and then I paint the whole thing as one. Uh, I do this on uh, because, for one, it keeps all the paint level in the same color. Two, it also looks more molded when you put the body kit on and off. See if you're moving the kit from one place to another for whatever reason. You know, so you touch the. Uh, for example, the, the side skirt there, if it was glued on afterwards, um, it could come off because you've already painted the body, you're, painting, you're, you're gluing another painted piece onto a painted body shell, it's not going to stick as well and you'll be able to tear it right off. So if you glue it all on as bare plastic and then do the painting, um, it, it tends to be a little bit more hard wearing and not so delicate. So we've got the rear spoiler and the rear bumper and then those alternate if you want to use them rear indicators and rear fogs of course those would be the, the rear fogs especially would be needed in the uk and in europe and the side indicators i guess for the us market okay on to the last page so this is where we can see what comes with the kit everything that comes with the kit and what is not needed the non-needed parts are grayed out as you can see the original brake discs and funny enough it says there that the uh, the more harder wearing front subframe is one we don't need and also that the airbag setup and front steering as we saw earlier we definitely wouldn't need that and of course the new the old style grille it's quite strange that it doesn't need that version i'm guessing that's for a kiwami style kit because the um the harder wearing ones do come with the kiwami kits however in this kit we obviously don't use it i'd like to see actually when i build the kit to see what the difference is going to be once i make the kit and use the other subframe which if i'm honest it's just down here um i'd like to see if it actually gives you any more camber which the other versions on the other kits like the crown uh gs 184s did um because they were slightly wider uh, obviously you've got the other grayed out parts there which are going to be for the front fogs you've got the spindles here and that is the lot. So I do hope you've enjoyed seeing inside the uh, the Junction Produce Aristo kit by Aoshima. Um, it is quite a hard kit to find. It took me a little while to get a hold of this one, if I'm honest. Um, and it was from Japan. So um, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have one in your stash or if you're lucky enough to get a hold of one, enjoy the build. It's a beautiful car and it will. And I've seen these built. They do look stunning. Um, so if there are any other cars that you'd like to see on this channel, please put them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and also catch me on Facebook and Instagram 
So for me here tonight, I'm going to say good night and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.